Triceratops is one of the most iconic dinosaurs. Its robust build, huge size, and instantly recognizable horns and frill make it the Ceratopsian poster child, not to mention its relationship with the gigantic theropod Tyrannosaurus rex. The two are often depicted as eternal rivals in Deep Time's greatest showdown, each capable of taking down the other. But what does the fossil record have to say about their duel? Triceratops was a gigantic chasmosaurine, a group of ceratopsians with long frills and brow horns. It lived in Lake Cretaceous, North America, and was one of the most formidable herbivores in its ecosystem at 5 to 8 tons as an adult. It used its incredible batteries of shearing teeth to feed on palms, cycads, and ferns, which were the dominant sources of vegetation at the time. Its famed frill functioned as defense, but it likely evolved for display in intraspecific communication. Its stocky, quadrupedal build and spear-sized horns resembled the result of crossing an abnormally large elephant with a Jackson's chameleon. It's currently recognized as being split into two species, Triceratops prorosus and Triceratops horridus. The first to be described was Triceratops horridus, which may have directly evolved into the slightly younger Triceratops prorosus. The differences between the two are subtle. T. horridus tends to have a short nasal horn, forward-directed orbital horns, and a fairly elongate snout while T. prorosus bears a longer nasal horn, more upward-directed orbital horns, and a shorter, deeper snout. Not only was Triceratops a massive, well-armed animal, it was also extraordinarily abundant. A 2011 study found that Triceratops made up 40% of all of the dinosaur fauna in the Hell Creek Formation. That was nearly double the next most common taxon, Tyrannosaurus. Clearly, Triceratops was doing something right. Its sharp beak and teeth, perfect for slicing plants, combined with its defensive and massive size, made it the perfect apex herbivore for its environment. Of course, a large population causes stiff competition for mates. Farc et al. 2009 and De Anastasio 2022 report healed combat lesions on Triceratops skulls that seem to be made by locking horns with other Triceratops. It looks like not only were their horns strong enough for combat, but they engaged in fighting regularly and pierced bone by doing so. These were weapons capable of dealing significant damage, and in life would have been covered by keratin, creating a sharper point than what we see preserved today. Of course, mating may have been one of the few times that Triceratops gathered in groups. It took until 2009 to find a single bone bed of Triceratops, and it only contained three juvenile individuals. The vast majority of the specimens collected were alone, indicating that a solitary lifestyle was more common for a three-horned friend. The idea of Triceratops herds gathering together in a shield wall to defend the group, while evocative, isn't supported by current evidence. Even though a Hell Creek battle royale of pack against herd may be unrealistic, a one-on-one -on -one duel of giants is just as epic. We have fossil evidence of an honest-to-goodness fight between the two. Hap 2008 describes a Triceratops horn with partially healed puncture marks that match the tooth profile of Tyrannosaurus, meaning that this Triceratops was attacked head-on and escaped, surviving long enough to recover. That's the only instance I could find in the literature of direct combat between the two, and we don't know what happened to the hunter. And while we know that Tyrannosaurus did feed on Triceratops, thanks to post-mortem bite marks on a Triceratops pelvis, how would a full-on battle between the two have gone down? The hunter and prey were comparable in size, with Tyrannosaurus having an edge in overall mass. Triceratops had twin spears ready to impale its opponent, along with a bony frill protecting its neck. Analysis of its inner ear structure indicates that it excelled at detecting low-frequency sounds, which makes sense considering the rumbles that its rival likely made. Tyrannosaurus had some of the best senses in the animal kingdom, thick foot pads to eliminate sound as it stalked its prey, and a bite strong enough to crush bone. They were uniquely adapted to combat the other. I reached out to paleontologists for their take. Eric Snively is a world-renowned expert on theropod biomechanics, and he led the 2019 study that discovered Tyrannosaurs were the most agile big theropods. One of his graduate students, Kyle Atkins Wellman, is studying agility in ornithischians, including ceratopsians. Here's Kyle's take. Triceratops had a lower rotational inertia than T. rex, and likely would have been able to turn much more quickly. For Triceratops, it would be vital to get as close as possible before launching the ambush, as it could easily get outmaneuvered, while this would not necessarily be as important when pursuing Edmontosaurus, although an ambush tactic would still be invaluable. The low rotational inertia of Triceratops might be evidence that they were more likely to fight than to flee, quickly turning to face any would-be attacker head-on. This too would have similar implications for hunting strategy, in that a T. rex would need to launch an ambush quickly, from behind, to get in a crippling bite in before it had to contend with the frill and horns. However, without more data on other aspects of locomotion, we cannot say with any degree of certainty. As for the question of predation frequency, T. rex likely preyed primarily on juveniles, sick, or old individuals. Given the high prevalence of Triceratops in these habitats, it seems likely that it was a regular prey item for T. rex. 
T-Rex may have used its higher relative agility in its predation tactics, but Triceratops was considerably more agile. Overall, I'd say the answer is that T-Rex likely did include Triceratops in its diet to a large degree, but exactly how that would go down is a subject that requires further research. Hopefully my research is able to shed some light on the matter in the next couple of years. It blows my mind to think that Triceratops, an armed and armored herbivore bigger than an elephant, could be so agile. It's no wonder that Tyrannosaurus evolved to be twice as agile as other theropods of similar size. It needed that adaptation in order to stand a chance of catching a Triceratops off guard. Just as Kyle said, Tyrannosaurus would have chosen the circumstances in which it hunted, preferring ambushes, particularly in heavy wooded areas where its enemy wouldn't have been able to use its superior agility to its advantage. The night hunting scene in Prehistoric Planet seems like a very realistic scenario. Tyrannosaurus had incredible vision and would have had a better chance of hunting success at night. It's safe to say that Triceratops was far from a helpless victim. Instead, it was both a powerhouse and a relative speedster that could turn on a dime to defend itself, and we have at least one preserved instance of a Triceratops getting attacked by a Tyrannosaurus and surviving. The terrain, time of day, and condition of the animal would all be crucial factors when it comes to a hunt, but to answer the question posed by the video's title, yes. Tyrannosaurus would go out of its way to minimize the risk posed by hunt, deliberately going after individuals that would be easier to take down, and there's a reason for that. Triceratops was fully capable of taking down a T-Rex, and T-Rex was fully capable of taking down a Triceratops. Most hunts fail, and it's never a good idea for a predator to attack an herbivore that it's evenly matched with. So of course Tyrannosaurus would have gone out of its way to select individuals that were less capable of defending themselves. I'll leave you with this final note by Eric Snively, functioning as a disclaimer about Triceratops' agility relative to T-Rex. I appreciate you taking the time to learn more about these incredible animals with me, and I'd love for you to subscribe and support the channel so I can continue to make more videos collaborating with paleontologists like this. Please consider joining the channel to gain loyalty badges, unique emojis, shoutouts, and early access to videos, among other perks. I'm the Vividen, and I'll see you next time.